In this video, we're back with the Suray Anamorphic 1.6 times full frame, but very small lens. I believe last month we did a video on this lens, but they sent me out the RF version, which I paired with the Canon C70. But ever since I got my Ronin 4D, they do offer a DL mount. And so it was too perfect of a fit not to put together this combination. And so Suray sent out the DL version so I could natively attach it to the Ronin 4D and see what sort of footage I can capture out of it and what the experience is like compared to using the 17 to 28 uh, native DJI lens that I've been using since I first got this camera. So balancing it on a camera like the 4D isn't really an issue whatsoever. Now, of course, in order to use autofocus or manual focus through the handles, you need to also hook up the focus motor. But the way I have this set up, I can literally go from the 17 to 28 DJI lens to this lens or any other lens with the focus motor in about 30 seconds. Now, the first time you're setting up this lens with this camera, there's one extra step of actually, if you want to use autofocus, you need to calibrate the lens for that and then it will save it in its profiles. You do this by simply telling the camera, hey, this is what minimum focus looks like, this is what infinity focus looks like, and then add some various points in between. And the more data points you give it, the better and more accurate each autofocus is going to be. And the autofocus honestly has been pretty spectacular, which I never thought I was going to say autofocus on an anamorphic lens. Are you like me and you absolutely hate creating graphics for videos? If that's the case, then you should be using Envato Elements. Envato Elements is your one-stop shop for pretty much any type of asset that you could need for your videos, whether that is graphic templates, custom overlays, music, sound effects, and Elements gives you unlimited downloads of all of these things, which allows you to download assets, try them out in your projects, and if they don't work out, it's no money wasted. And even though they offer very affordable plans for all types of different creators and companies out there, if you want an even better offer, use the link in the description below to save even more money. Huge thanks to Envato for sponsoring this video. Uh, let's get back to talking about that lens. In one sense, I'm very happy because the native DJI lens I've been using on the 4D have made this camera very uh, commercial. I wasn't getting a lot of character out of this camera because of the lens and attaching this anamorphic we can obviously see in this video, I'm able to add kind of my signature to my videos rather than it just being another like clean cut camera setup. Viewing it in the camera is also easy because in the monitor settings, you can have a anamorphic D squeeze uh, on your viewer. There's not exactly 1.6, there's a 1.65, which is basically close enough. And it gives me a fairly accurate representation of what I'm going to get once I convert it to 1.6 in DaVinci Resolve, which thankfully, just recently in 18.5 update, Resolve added a custom anamorphic de-squeeze option because prior to that, they only had a, I believe, 1.5 and a 2 and a couple options, but 1.6 was not in there. And so now you're able to go into Resolve and change your clip, clip attributes to exactly 1.6 and you'll get a proper de-squeeze that way. So all very good timing for me getting this lens. When it comes to working with this lens, there's of course still the minimum focus issue, which right now I'm actually using a little close-up diopter, which I got a whole set of these things uh, for about 12 bucks. And I believe I showed them off in the last video. So right now, as you can see, uh, it's off and I'm out of focus, but the background's in focus uh, because this is pretty much minimum focus on that. And not only does that give you the ability to do close-ups, but for me, it also adds a lot more character to the lens itself. To be honest, even though this is a very cheap add-on to the front of the lens, I haven't noticed any bad like fringing or artifacting. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not the most extreme high quality, airy, anamorphic, looking lens, I get that. But considering the price of this entire lens package, I think it gives a really cool look and something that I personally would actually use on commercial or narrative short film projects. The other thing that you're really gonna have to change in post is while anamorphic usually does have a the con, convex, concave, I don't know, the, the distortion is usually a more barrel distortion where it's, it's like this, but 
for some reason this lens actually has a concave distortion where lines are like this. Now to be honest this isn't an issue whatsoever once you go into Resolve and or really any editing program and just make that slight adjustment. It's incredibly easy to do and once you figure out a good percentage for each lens you're working with you can pretty much just apply that to all your clips and be good to go but it is something to take note of that you should be doing and while you're viewing it on your monitor it can look a little crazy depending how many straight lines and how close you are to those straight lines. My overall thoughts haven't changed on this lens and especially attached to the 4D it kind of has become my main a camera setup that I've fallen in love with. It's a great amount of character, but I still have things like autofocus. I can go from a handheld locked off style shooting where I turn off the gimbal, lock everything, and I don't get any sort of wobble because the lens isn't very heavy. So contrary to popular belief with the 4D, you can still have that really nice handheld footage look. Or of course, turn the gimbal back on and you will have incredibly smooth footage. And again, being able to pair anamorphic with autofocus from the LiDAR and tracking and all the various joysticks and options you get with something like the 4D, you can get incredibly beautiful and complex camera movements without doing a whole lot of work or at least missing the shot. So for run and gun cinematic filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, this is basically the dream setup in my opinion. I think the biggest annoyance that I have now is going back and forth between using this close-up filter and not. So for example, right now, again, I'm nice and close up, but if I wanted to pull focus to this like tree in the background, I uh, can't do that. This is, this is infinity with the macro lens hooked up, so I have to screw it off and uh, go through that whole setup. So one, you're kind of limited into what your focus pulls of shots look like. If you want to go from super close up to super far away, you can't do that. You'd have to have the close up subject be three feet. And that's where I think having a longer focal length than 35 would definitely come into play. Or what I'm trying to find is a very thin magnetic quick release that uh, for this 58 millimeter thread that I can put on the lens and then another magnetic piece on the filter so that I can just kind of pop it on and off rather than having to sit there and unscrew it. It's not a huge deal and it allows me to use the lens which is incredibly helpful and it's what, again, I think the final image is well worth it. But if you get annoyed by simple stuff like that, it's definitely probably one of the biggest cons currently. Of course, if you guys want to learn more about this lens and anything I've talked about in this video, check out the link in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.